all about our troubles. Your airplane is crying. Answer by and by. Feel a little prayer wheel turning. Know a little bar is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my pipe dream drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud out may hide the light of will do it. If you ain't been washed in the blood, you better start getting looking for it right now because it takes the blood to save you tonight. <clears throat> Oh. 
Let's turn over to 313. Let's try a verse or two of that. <clears throat> I said it's good to be back in the Lord's house this evening. Like I said, we appreciate everybody that's come out to be with us tonight. We will be much in prayer for those that's still out sick and uh, those that's not with us tonight. God knows where the, where they are and what's going on with them and the things that's happening and for, for them. And you be much in prayer for them. I, I know we've got a lot of sickness going around through our church, so be praying for them. Anybody, we always like to give you an opportunity to serve the Lord, so maybe somebody has a song on your heart, something you'd like to do for the Lord this evening. Anybody else tonight? Something on your heart? Song, a word, or testimony? Amen. Amen. You pray for Brother Dennis. He's, if he gets the cataract surgery, help him. Amen. Just remember this. Somebody else tonight? Hearts and minds clear? Do be much in prayer for us as we will have a lot of traveling to do this week. We'll be leaving about 5 o'clock in the morning, head down to Knoxville for a few days. And you pray for Melissa, she's here. I'll be back down, I'll be back on Tuesday night, hopefully, Lord willing. And then I'll be back down in Knoxville again on month Friday. So I've got a lot of traveling for the next two weeks to do. And you be praying about all that. God give us safe traveling grace. I'll be with Melissa's while we're away as well. And uh, pray for Melissa. She has a doctor's appointment on Tuesday, hopefully the get the process started again and hopefully get back in. Get uh, She has it scheduled for January. Maybe they'll be able to get her scheduled up quicker for her surgery that was postponed because of the sickness that we, uh, because of flu we had a few weeks ago. But you'd be much in prayer for her. We do desire your prayer as always. But we just thank God for, for loving us and giving us the ability to be able to go, the health and the strength to be able to do what God would have us to do. So, if you got your Bibles tonight, we're going to open up over here to the book of Genesis, chapter number 13. Genesis, chapter number 13. When you find your place, if you're able, please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. 
We just want to say that, do that, which God would have us to do, and then we'll get out of here and go home. Amen. I'll do my part if you'll do your part, and I promise you God's going to do his part. Amen. Genesis chapter number 13. If you don't know where that's at, that's in the beginning of the Bible. Amen. That's in the first book of the Bible. Not ain't in the back of the Bible, but in the front of the Bible. Amen. Uh, Genesis chapter number 13. Genesis chapter 13, verse number 1. The Bible says this, And Abram went up out of Egypt, and he and his wife and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, under the place where his tent uh, it had been at the beginning uh, between Bethel and Hai, under the place of the altar which had, which he had made there at the first, uh, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Amen. And Lot said, "A lot also went with Abram, and had flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them that what they that." they might dwell together, for their substance was great, and so they could not dwell t- uh, together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perzite dwelt then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, there, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen. For we be brethren, it is not the is not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will take the right. Or if thou wilt depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the, Lord, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou camest unto Zoar. And then Lot cho- chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east and separated themselves, the one from the other. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and the Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. And the men of Sodom were wicked, sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, and summon ourselves before thee. Thanking you for another day and another opportunity, God, just to come out to your house and in thy presence. Uh, Lord, I thank you for your mercy and your grace and everything that's been done and said uh, in our life. Lord, the word that you've given us tonight, dear God, I pray, dear Heavenly Father, uh, you'll help us to share it to the people. Uh, God, that it might be able to help them in some way, some shape, form, or fashion. And God, I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we'll grow by it and we'll strengthen by it. Uh, and Lord, we'll share it with others. Uh, Lord, I pray for every name that's on our prayer list, every burden that's been called unto us, uh, spoken and unspoken tonight, dear God. We just place them at your feet. Uh, God, we put them in your hands that you're able to do something with them. So many families around us tonight, uh, God, are making her are making uh, the hard decisions, Lord. I, I pray, God, you'll give them the ability to make the right choice, Lord. Open their blinded eyes that they might see, and we'll give you all the glory tonight, Lord. Not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray, amen. Amen. Here we have the story of Lot, amen. Uh, we have the story of Abram and Lot. Uh, I know that some of us have probably know the story, have heard the story before. Uh, hey, but I was thinking there this afternoon as the Lord began to put this on our heart. Uh, uh, we know that Lot, um, cho- uh, Lot chose down in Sodom. He chose down the plain of Jordan. And, uh, uh, but I was thinking this afternoon, I wonder how many times in our life uh, that we've made a bad choice. Amen. Uh, we, I wonder how many times that we've made a choice that we really probably uh, regretted right after making it. Amen. Uh, and I was thinking about Lot, and uh, now the old devil, he's very good at painting a pretty picture. Amen. Uh, he's very good at making things that 
are bad look good. Amen. I, hey, we live in a day and a time where the world calls that which is bad good and calls that which is good bad. And here we have the story about Abraham and Lot. And I want you to get the gist of the story. Amen. Uh, Abram and Lot were brethren. They were kinfolk. Amen. Uh, and God had called Abram and told him to go and to sojourn. Amen. Uh, he had called him out of his home and he sent him out. Uh, and he took his family with him. Uh, but he took Lot also and Lot's family with him. Uh, now I want you to understand what's going on in this situation. Uh, that, and the reason that they're having to separate. Uh, the reason that they're having to separate is, is because they've been so blessed. Amen. Uh, it wasn't because there was a hardship. Uh, it wasn't because they had a falling out. Amen. Uh, uh, the herdsmen wasn't even fighting because they were fighting over uh, cattle or anything else. Uh, they were just arguing and strifle uh, because they were running out of space where they was because God had blessed them so much. Amen. Uh, listen, I tell you what, if we anybody here today can relate to that, uh, hey man, we are as a country, uh, we are living in a place, amen, uh, where opportunity has been everywhere. Uh, you say, well, listen, I'm just, uh, I don't have, I barely got enough. Uh, well, listen, I tell you what we got, uh, we got more than we need, amen. Uh, I don't see nobody starving out. Uh, I don't see nobody hurting or struggling, amen. Uh, hey, if you're hurting and struggling, you see me at the church. Uh, I promise you, we'll figure something out, amen. Uh, hey, but I can tell you this, God's been good to us. Uh, we live in a, can a country, uh, we live in a place, and we live in an area where we're able to be able to worship and to serve God. Uh, hey, but I'll tell you what, uh, Lot made it easy. When Abram came to Lot and presented unto him uh, this opportunity, uh, he said, look, said, if you go right, I'll go left. Uh, if you go left, I'll go right. Uh, you just pick out where you want to go, amen. Uh, you just pick out what, ain't that amazing how good God blessed them, amen. Uh, ain't that good about how God blessed them. Uh, hey, they had so much, amen. Uh, you want to know what Melissa and I argue the most? I mean, I told you this morning, we've been married 34 years, amen. Uh, never had the first argument, which was a lie, amen. Uh, hey, look here, you want to know what we have most of our disagreements about? You want to know what we get upset about? Is what we're going to have for supper. Where we're going to go eat. What restaurant we want to go to. Amen. Look, is that not something to fight about? Is that not something to get aggravated over? Amen. You want to know what that is? Too blessed. Amen. That's too blessed. Hey, that's what Abraham, that's what I, Lot was up against. Lot told, Lot, Abraham told Lot, said, you go right, I'll go left. Uh, that's generally the way it goes, ain't it? Uh, hey, you say, well, what do you want to eat? Uh, I don't care. And then you say, I don't care. And then they pick. Uh, and then you get mad because they pick somewhere you didn't want to go. I got one brave soul with me today. Amen. Look here. Abram said, look, you... How could, a now Abram really didn't care. This is, this is what amazes me. Abram really didn't care. Abram said, look, Lot said, you go right, I go left. You go left, I go right. What, what would have happened? What do you think would have happened if, if Lot had a chose the opposite direction? And Abram had a went down into the plain of Jordan. What do you think would have happened? I'll tell you what would happen. I believe Abram would have still been a man of God. I believe Abram would have still been righteous. Do you know what happened? But Lot, just because we make one bad decision doesn't mean that we have to continue making that bad decision. Just because we make one bad choice doesn't mean that we have to make that choice daily, amen? It doesn't mean we have to keep doing that over and over and over and over. Bible said that Abraham... Abram went out and he dwelled in the land of Canaan. Uh, he dwelled over in the hills. Uh, he dwelled over there in the place uh, hey, where his cattle could roam. Uh, what to happen to Lot? <coughs> when Lot went down into the plains, uh, where did he go? Uh, he went down and lived in the city. Uh, let me ask you tonight, uh, how many city farmers do you know? city 
farmers do you know that prosper? Amen. How many city farmers do you know got their cattle living in the penthouse? Come on. Huh? To me, that don't sound like a smart decision, does it you? Uh, amen. Look, I'm just going to tell you right now. Uh, Abraham was blessed for what? Uh, following God. Uh, Abraham was blessed. Uh, and how was he blessed? Uh, he was blessed to be able uh, to have those cattle. Uh, he was blessed in the, uh, uh, being the, by all the, uh, shit, uh, the things that he had out there. Uh, and the men that he had working for. You say, well, look, he moved into the city. He had his herdsmen out there, and they were doing, uh, 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 and that was all right. Uh, let me just tell you something. Uh, you want to know why he prospered? Uh, I'll tell you. Let me give you something about a leader. Amen. Uh, there's a difference in a leader and a boss. Uh, a boss will tell you what to do. A leader will show you what to do. Amen. Uh, hey, I promise you, they'll be right there every step of the way. Uh, Abram out there, he wasn't dining up in the city, amen. Uh, he was out there with the herdsmen, uh, and they continued to grow and multiply. Uh, hey, I'll tell you down there, uh, when you make a bad decision and you keep doing it every day, it'll just continue to get worse and worse. I've said this often, and I can't take the Bible and prove it, but you can't take the Bible and disprove it either. I believe when Lot looked down over Jordan and he looked over all the plains and I don't believe when Lot first went that way that Sodom was as bad as it was when he had to leave I think it had prog progressed to get worse but just like the old devil paints up a pretty picture and just like he paints that thing up nice he doesn't reveal everything down there amen look here I'm telling you, not everything is as it seems. Amen? Now, she ain't here to defend herself, but I wonder how many times Amy has looked across the room and said, my Lord, what a decision I made. <laughs> Lord, help. I'm just giving you a hard time. Look here. What are y'all laughing about? I'll guarantee you Hazel's looked across the room and said, Lord, help. Amen. We've all made decisions. Amen. Hey, that we've regretted in the long run. We've all made things, decisions, and said things and done things. Hey, that we wish that we could take back. Here's what I like, what I see without my life. Uh, the old devil, he wants to keep reminding me of the past. Uh, he wants to keep reminding me of that bad decision. Uh, he wants to take me back there so many times. Uh, and for times and for periods, uh, I allow that to happen. Uh, but here's what God has always said. Uh, and God will always want you to understand that. Uh, you cannot go back to tomorrow. I don't have a time machine. Nobody has a time machine. Hey, well, you can go back and fix it. Hey, if you could go back and correct that, you might mess something else up. But here's what you can do. You can change that thing from today. You can start living just like you never made that bad decision. You can live today just like you know what that decision will do to you if you do it again. I tell you, Abraham and Lot, they had some great things. They had a great thing going on. And just like us, just like Abraham and them, we too many times take something that's going well and we mess it up. Amen. We mess it up. Here's what I think happened down here in the land of Sodom. Here's what I think happened over in the plains of Jellico or, Jer or Jordan. I believe there was a whole lot and he went over that way. And I believe there was some things that you, you ever feel like you just, you make a choice and you think you're doing it for the right reason and then the next thing you know you end up in a lot of trouble. Right there. Here's what I want to tell you. Sometimes when we make bad decisions, God allows us to make that decision. Amen. Look, you, we got so many people today 
that want to blame God for all the bad stuff. Right? I mean, everything that happens bad, why would God let that happen? Why would God do this? And why would God do that? Do you ever give him credit for the good stuff? Do we ever give him credit for the right decisions? Amen? Here's the problem. A lot of times, God's trying everything he can. Hey, to direct us in the right path. To put us in the right place. The Bible said plainly right here that down in the land, the plains of Jordan, it was well watered. Amen? From every side. Hey, there was all kinds of places for the cattle to get water. There was all kinds of places, hey, for the gardens to grow. But Lot decided to go on down into the city. Hey, I say make the choice that God wants you to make. If you make the wrong one, find out how to get out of it. Amen. Here's what led, I believe, to Lot's destruction. Lot had some troubles, just like a lot of us. Because I believe that he left God right where he was. Amen. Look, here's what I want to ask you. Look here. The Bible tells us right here in verse number four. Look what happened in verse number four. The Bible said there, uh, uh, this is talking about Abram. Verse number four, it said, under the plague. Let me just back up and read verse number three. The Bible said, and he went on his journeys from the south. Even to Bethel, <coughs> under the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai, under the place of the altar. Here's what the Bible said there he went to the place from the beginning, right? That's where Abraham was at. He went under the place where he was at, and what did he have there? He had an altar there. What did he do at that altar? <clears throat> Throw parties? Huh? Have a shindig? Amen? Lay around? Come in and sit on a pew and just go back home like he did next to every night? It wasn't nothing, no big deal. You want to know what ends up and helps, what causes us to make bad decisions? I'll tell you what makes us have bad decisions. Because we don't get down to the altar and talk to God about it. Amen? Hey, a lot of times we'll make our decisions just on a fluke. We'll make our decisions, hey, just on a whim. Hey, we'll fly off the handle, say something we shouldn't say. Do something we shouldn't do. Uh, hey, I tell you what Abram did. Uh, Abram went down. Uh, he journeyed down to the altar uh, and he talked to God. Uh, he says, God, about everything. Uh, hey, I don't care what it is in your life. Uh, I don't care what choices you got to make. Uh, I say, take it all to God. Uh, hey, if you want to know what you should wear to school tomorrow, uh, ask God. Uh, hey, if you want to know, uh, hey, how you're supposed to act. Uh, Talk to God. You want to know who you should be talking to, who you should be running around with. Take it to God. Hey, you want to know what's wrong with your marriage? Take it to God. You want to know what's wrong with your finances? Get it on the altar. I don't think that Abram went up there once a week. I don't think he went up there twice a week. I don't think he went up there three times a week. I think he went to the altar every day. Amen. Ain't you glad to know that we got a place that we can go? Hey, look, this is a wonderful place. If you don't have nowhere else to pray, right here's a good place to pray. But I'm glad I can get a hold of God. I think everybody ought to have a place. They ought to have somewhere they can get a hold of God. We can pray anywhere, but I think we ought to have a time set up. I believe we ought to have a daily routine where we get a hold of God. Amen? Where we talk to the Lord. I believe we ought to have a daily routine. Hey, where we pick this book up. Hey, we're always wanting to know what God wants us to do, what God's will in our life is. We always want God to speak to us. Problem is, we don't ever pick up what he's saying. Amen. He's done said it. He's done wrote it down for you. 
hey, we just need to read it, amen. Uh, listen, I know that everything in this book uh, was not written to me. But I do know that everything in this book uh, was written for me, amen. Uh, hey, not everything in here, uh, even things in the New Testament, amen, uh, was written to a previous generation. Uh, even things in the New Testament uh, was written under the Jews. Uh, hey, but it sure will help me grow, amen. Uh, it sure will help me to figure some things out. Uh, that's why the Bible said to study the word, uh, to show thyself approved uh, unto God, uh, a workman uh, that needeth not to be ashamed. Uh, Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hey, we got to know what's for us and how we can grow by. Amen. You end up making a bad decision when you don't have all the facts. Amen. How many times have you made a bad decision on a whim, just on a reaction? And then all of a sudden you hear all the facts and you think, man, I wish I hadn't have done that. I wish I had not have done that. Look, making a decision on a whim. I remember a few years ago, it's been several years ago now, I don't know how long ago I can remember, probably, well, five years ago, five years ago. I remember Melissa was wanting a new car, a new vehicle. So she decided she was going to get her one, she was going to get her a, a Hyundai Tucson. And we looked everywhere finally found the deal. Amen. We finally found the right price. She had saw one that she liked a little better. We test drove it and all this and this and this. We decided we were going to think about it, pray about it. And when we pulled back in, oh, she saw it. I mean, it was the right color. It had the right wheels on it. It all looked good. Man, we went in there. We got it all figured out. We got the payments all worked out. We got the finances all worked out. Signed our John Henry right down on the bottom line. When we didn't get no, we didn't even get across the road, did we? We didn't even get far down the road. We got out of that vehicle. And I walked back there, man, and I looked at the back of that vehicle and I said, Oh no. Oh no. This whole time, the only reason she wanted to take this vehicle was because she wanted an all-wheel drive vehicle. I mean, she wanted something where she didn't have to drive my truck in the snow no more. She wanted something where she didn't have to drive that big old thing around, so she wanted, she wanted something she could handle. And we got down the road, and we got out of the vehicle, and I walked to the back of that thing, and I seen on the back, and I said, see AWD on that nowhere, son. I didn't see it on her nowhere, and I started digging through the back. I finally found the stinking uh, uh, owner's manual, and it was an FWD. Amen. Uh, let me just tell you, it was the sorriest thing in the snow uh, that I tell you what, I couldn't even get out of the driveway, could I? I couldn't even get that thing out of the driveway uh, when it snowed. Uh, it was all I could do. I told her, I said, look, uh, I get this thing out today, uh, it ain't never coming back again, amen. I, I finally got that thing out of the driveway. I, I got it over to, to Johnson City. Uh, hey, I found the Lord just provided for us. Uh, hey, because we prayed that time, amen. Uh, we took it to God. Uh, hey, the first time uh, we reacted on a whim, uh, I told the Lord, uh, I said, if you'll let me get out of this driveway, uh, it will not never be back. Uh, it ain't been back yet. Uh, Thank God I went to the altar. Hey, but when you don't go to the altar, you'll get all messed up. Amen. You'll make bad decisions. Amen. <coughs> you'll make bad decisions. Look now. Now she's driving a Toyota. What do you think happens to that? Johnny made the bad decision. Amen. That's between her and Johnny. Ain't you glad you got a place to go to? Look, I could tell y'all about. I could we, we go all the way down that story, son. Just how God worked out that story. Hey, man, that was a good vehicle. Could have tore up. Hey, man, look, motor. It didn't have like seventy thousand miles on the motor boat up there. You know what kind of warranty it had on it? Fixed it. Bad 
the sea. And they were saved up. Took it to the hot, took it to the bill, shit and dropped through, didn't want nothing to do with it. What did I tell you? Thirteen thousand dollars. Somewhere around thirteen thousand dollars put a new motor in it. And I said, Good grief. I just I started calling around trying to find a motor. The only mechanic I know was Johnny. And he works on Toyotas. He don't know nothing about no stinking Hyundai. But yeah. <coughs> we just prayed, didn't we? You know where we went to? Back to the beginning. Back down there to the beginning. Her on one side, me on the other. There at the altar of the Lord. Amen. And you know what happened? Here's what happened. I'll just tell you what happened. There we was going to be out $13,000 for a car that wasn't worth sixteen. And you do that kind of math. Now, how many upside down you going to be in that mess? Amen. Here's what I want to tell you. Get a hold of God. Let God make the decision. Now, we prayed about it and prayed about it and prayed about it. Now, and you know what happened? Uh, there's somebody uh, that what that had left so long ago uh, that Johnny used to be used, was a service manager there. They forgot how bad Johnny was. Worked at a Hyundai dealership now. Amen. Uh, he said, bring it down. We'll see what we can do. Uh, got it covered under warranty. Amen. Uh, didn't cost us one red cent. Uh, give us a vehicle to drive while they worked on it. Uh, amen. Uh, and you know what? Uh, all because we made the right decision by going ahead and letting God work it out. Uh, Hey, I ask you tonight, uh, what's going on in your life? Uh, what do you need help with? Uh, what do you got problems with? Uh, hey, i tell you what you need to do. Uh, you just need to let God get a hold of it. Uh, you need to let God have it. Uh, and I promise you, down at the altar, you'll find some help too. Right there in verse number four. He said in verse number four, he said he went down there to the altar and he talked to God. Don't you think Abraham, before he ever approached Lot, said, Lord, whatever way you want me to go, whatever way you want that Lot to go, <coughs> wherever you want me, let me go. Do you, do you know where he went to? Do you know where Lot ended up? In the land of Canaan. You know what Canaan is? You know where Canaan's at? That's down there where what? The milk and honey flows. That's down there where the milk and honey flows. Amen? You say, preacher, I don't like milk and honey. Well, listen, you ain't never had what I've had. Amen? Uh, you ain't never had a dose of the stuff, the, the glory, uh, out of the glory spout. Amen? Uh, hey, Bible tells us that he got over that. Uh, down there, there, they got down there in, in the land of Canaan. Uh, and you know what happened down in the land of Canaan? Uh, down in the land of Canaan, uh, Abram began to be blessed. Uh, Abram began to be talked about. Uh, Abram began to grow. Uh, what a God we serve when we just listen to him. When we listen to him. I told you this morning. I told somebody this morning. I heard uh, Brother Kenneth Frank this morning, said, or this week, it said this. He was talking about poor. It's hard to hear God when we've already made up our mind what he should say. Amen. Look, you'll not go down there to the altar of God and, and, and get from God what God wants you to have when you've already got a to-do list for him to do. Amen. I believe Abram went over there and he said, Lord, what would you have me do? What would you have me do? I believe right here. The Bible said Abram saw down there and he saw the land of Jordan, saw the plains down there. I, I believe Lot got down there and I believe that he began to get convicted by the old devil. I, I believe he began to get down there and he began to be led away and astray by the devil. I, I believe he got down there in that land and the city. I, he enjoyed all the fun things that the flesh enjoyed. Amen. I, let me just tell you this, uh, just because it looks good uh, don't always mean it is good. Uh, just because it feels right uh, don't always mean that it is right. Uh, hey, you want to know whether or not you should do it or not? Take it to God. 
cares what I feel people are about. We have people struggle so much with the things that's going on in the world and whether I should do this or whether I should do that. If it lines up with this book, you should do it. Amen. You say, well, how do I know what's in that book? Read it. You don't understand it? You got my number. You ain't got my number. Grab a card, see me after church. We'll do everything we can to help you grow. We'll do everything we can to help you get to where you do understand it. Talk to God. I believe worldly decisions and worldly desires, amen, uh, begin to uh, begin to infiltrate uh, uh, Lot. Look here in verse number 10. The Bible said there in verse number 10, it said, Lot lifted up his eyes, uh, and he beheld all the plain of Jordan, uh, that it was well watered, uh, every plain, uh, every, uh, it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, uh, like the land of Egypt, uh, as thou comest unto Zor. Uh, in other words, Lot lifted up his eyes, uh, and he looked out there, and he saw that plain. Uh, you know what Lot did not do? You know what Lot didn't do? He didn't go to God. He didn't ask, Lord, said, is this where you'd have me to go? He didn't say, Lord, is that what you have me to do? Is that where you'd have me to dwell? You know what he did? He looked, opened up his eyes, he looked out there and he saw. Let me tell you right here, young folks. Let me tell you right here, everybody else. Uh, look out there, just because everybody else is doing it, uh, don't mean it's all right. Uh, hey, just because church folks doing it, uh, don't mean it's all right. Uh, hey, I say talk to God. Hey, man, talk to the Lord about it. I know we live in a time right now when the devil likes to paint things up as, as fake or, or, or religious thing. Amen. Let me just tell you, everything that says they're of God is not of God. Amen. We're going to go down a long laundry list of things, but I'm not going to go there tonight. I want you to realize this, not everything, not every song that says it's a Christian song is a Christian song. I've told you ways to figure out whether it is or not. And if you'll line up with the book, tell you about Jesus and tell us so you can understand it, uh, there's a good chance it's a God. Amen. Uh, hey, but if you can't do those things, it's not. Uh, not every song, not every song is done, uh, singer that says they're doing it for the Lord is doing it for the Lord. Uh, hey, not every preacher that stands behind the pulpit, uh, they'll preach you the truth. Amen. Uh, they'll preach you a little bit, mingle with lies. Uh, hey, I tell you all the time, uh, I, 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 there's a lot of times I want to preach out of the book of Terry. Uh, hey, but it ain't in here. Amen. Uh, hey, but I can tell you this, uh, if it comes out of this book, it's it's right. Uh, not everybody sings in the choir. Uh, not everybody testifies. Uh, not everybody shouts and hollers uh, in church. Uh, it's going to be right with God. Uh, hey, but I'll tell you this. Uh, if God wants you to sing, sing. Uh, hey, if God wants you to shout, shout. Uh, hey, if he wants you to testify, testify. But I'll tell you one thing I know without a shadow of a doubt uh, that he wants you to do. Uh, and that's to trust him in all things. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every Christian praying, every heart searching. I ask you tonight, what decision have you made that you regret? Are you still bothered by it? Are they still hindering your life? Are you still struggling because of the decisions that you made some time ago? Let me tell you something tonight. Maybe you need some direction. Maybe you need some help. Maybe you need some guidance on where you go from here. Your compass, your moral compass is right here. It's right here on this altar. You can find the help that you need right here.
choices. Hey, but I want to be what God would have me to be. we have tonight just like Abraham had to get on an altar. This altar is open for you once again. If you're here tonight and you've got any need, you want to lay it down. Come on, stand. Come on, stand. You can finish up playing right here. We're going forward in prayer. I hope you God gave us, gave man, woman, humans, he gave us something he didn't give nothing else that he created. He gave us a will, a free will. It's our will to whether we choose him or not. Our choices, just like Lot's, will affect the rest of our life. We didn't go through the rest of Lot's story. Lot ended up vexing his righteous soul every day. Every day, Lot was burdened down because of the mess and the decision that he made that day, choosing to go down there in the flames and to live in the city. He was vexed every day. We know Sodom and the Gomorrah was destroyed because of the sinful nature of the things that was going on down there. Lot was the only one who made it out. Only Lot made it out. What a God. He made it out, but barely made it out. Listen, there's some people living in the land of sin living in the land of sin today that God's been trying to tell you, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. There's going to come a day when that get out doesn't help no more. Help no more. God sent angels down to talk to Lot. 
they did not drag Lot out. They didn't pick him up and transform him out of that. It had to be Lot's choice to come out. If you have a bad decision that you've made, you're living in those choices that you've made, it's your dec- it has to be your decision to get out of it. It's God's already prepared a way. God prepared a way for Lot to get out of it. Lot just had to be willing to go. You have to be willing to go. They, our loved ones, our neighbors, our friends, those people we know, they have to be willing to go. Have to be willing to take the choice that God made for them. Anybody else got something on your heart? Hearts and minds clear? Be much in prayer. We just wanted to tell y'all we appreciate you, and uh, we just got you a little something for your anniversary. Is all we got. We got Melissa something. Tell her we're sorry. <laughs> no, we just want you to know we do appreciate you. We love you. And we appreciate all you do for us as a, as me personally, as a family, and as a church family. We appreciate all you do. We really do. And I know you do a lot. I know you do a lot for me. I know you do a lot for everybody here. And I know it's a. Uh, I know if everybody here is like me, it's up and down all the time. I know that you just have to deal with it. And Melissa, you have to deal with it as much as he does. But, and I appreciate you, and I love you, I really do. Hey, Amen. We sure do appreciate the church. And I tell you, the Lord blessed us with a wonderful wife, and we thank God. Here's what the Lord gave us this week, and I hadn't even mentioned it to her, but I've been praying about it. And you know, the uh, God called me into the ministry. God called me into the work. She didn't choose it. She didn't choose the work that we do. Now, God blessed me by giving her to me, and I believe that's exactly why he called me into this. But I think I, I just thank God for her and appreciate her for that. But we thank you. We thank the church and we appreciate you. Anybody else got anything before we close? Amen. God bless. Amen. We appreciate being here. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate men and God that's willing to stand. Anybody else tonight? Something on your heart. How you doing? Anybody else? If not, do be much in prayer for us this week. As I said, we got to travel a lot. We got a, we got a lot of traveling to do. God knows all about it. So you just pray that God give us traveling grace. And we'll pray for you with all those prayer that's on our prayer list. We got a lot of sick that's out there. Remember. Tell somebody about the Lord this week. Shake somebody's hand, tell me you love them. God bless you. Bring somebody with you, with you.